Local nightclubs are dying. There's nowhere to get DJ residencies. You're getting good at DJing and you can't get out and practice your skills until you can take it to the next level. What are you to do? That's what we were talking about last week on this show. We were talking about the death of local clubs and what that means for people learning to DJ or wanting to DJ. So we had a huge response to that, but it was quite negative. So this week we're going to spin it around. This week we're going to turn to the positives. We're going to look at seven DJ gigs you can get beyond clubs, beyond festivals, and yes, beyond becoming a mobile DJ, though that's a great thing to do, to kind of replace that DJ journey where you're learning to play the music you love. And the whole subject is, of course, on this live show with you following along if you're watching us live. So you can comment, you can share your gigs, you can share your success, and we will share everything you've got to say as we go through today's live show. But if you're watching the recording, this is something we do every week here at Digital DJ Tips. You're gonna get a lot of benefit from this. So stick around. We'll have our 30 second countdown to let the people live tune in and then we'll get going with the show. I'll see you in about 30 seconds time. Well, I would if our <laughs> counter was working, but it's not. Hey, these things happen. I've no idea why that stopped working, but uh, should we give it one more go? And if it doesn't work, then we'll just get on with the show. We've wasted 30 seconds. Yeah, it doesn't want to go that. Well, well, well. The things you learn. Should we give it a third go? Yeah, let's do it. I like to hear the music every week. Let's give it a try. I'm not going to lie, totally pilot error, wrong button. Right, the important thing here though is that we're live and that means everything we talk about here you can join in with. So that's exactly what we did last week. Last week we went live, just our usual show, and a few people have been saying our local clubs are closing down and it's annoying. And we therefore talked about it and we got one of our most popular live shows ever. Uh, I mean, this has about 60, 70,000 views. Uh, we got about 700 comments on this and it's become one of our most, as I say, popular topics for this. But it was quite negative and we are not negative people. We're positive people. We like to give you things you can do. We like to give you a way forward and not just leave you at the bottom thinking it was Give me the great in 88. No, we don't want any of that. So we've got seven things for you this week that you can do in order to turn it around and to bring your... DJing gigs back if you're struggling to get gigs, if you're struggling to do things. These are seven ideas that have come from the community. But um, as I say, the whole point here is that you can share yours. So if you're watching on Facebook, Twitch or YouTube, then please just type away and I will get to as many of you as I can as we go through the show. By the way, if you're totally new to this, we're Digital DJ Tips. I'm Phil Morse. Uh, we are the biggest online DJ school. This is our book. You can get it on Amazon, Kindle, Audible and all those places. Uh, we sell DJ courses. We sell DJ training. That's what we do. But every week we go live with these shows on a Tuesday and Thursday, in term time anyway. We take a break in holidays. Uh, and, uh, and we talk DJ. it's what we do. So it's always live at 3 p.m. London, 10 a.m. Eastern. Apart from when the clocks change in America, but not in Europe, which is happening next week, I think. And then, then the time difference changes for just a couple of weeks before <sighs> it all snaps back to normal. Anyway, first of our 10 ideas for getting yourself DJ gigs when there ain't no gigs to be had. And these are all basically based around, most of these are based around a real um, thread that goes through the way DJs are succeeding nowadays. And actually it's not so much different to the way they've always succeeded, which is number one, the underground never dies. What do we mean by this? What we mean by this is that if you make your events smaller, take them underground, don't try and put on the biggest gig ever, the biggest festival, the biggest show in the biggest club in town, make it small, you can generally find enough people to come and have a great time, right? So by underground, I mean small, but I mean, really, I mean doing it yourself. Finding your crowd, finding the people who want to hear what you want to do and doing it yourself. It's better to have 20 people come to a gig where the venue could only hold 30 than to hire a venue for 500 and only have 30 turn up, right? So this is all about doing it yourself. It's about being a bit of a DJ promoter, about promoting your own gigs. Uh, and there's lots and lots of ideas here. So here's the first one. And we've illustrated this by this picture. It's tribute nights. Look, if you are 
like me, my friends, and a lot of our students here at Digital DJ Tips, not a spring chicken anymore. You don't have that massive group of people who go out every week who you can start DJing for and you've got an instant crowd. Hey, unless you are 18, 19, 20, 21, that's probably you. You know, late 20s, people are peeling off. Late 30s, most of them are peeled off. And look, by the time you get to my age, the only people going out are people who are basically recently divorced and they're looking to meet someone uh, and they want to relive their youth. Look, this is a great way if you are a little bit older. Pick the scene, and it might not be the 80s, of course, could be the 90s or the noughties. Pick the scene that you were young, going out and partying, enjoying, and recreate it. Dig out the old music. Even make it fancy dress. Throw a party night that is a themed tribute back to the time when it all began for you. And this is the kind of thing that will drag people out of the woodwork who would otherwise not come out, right? So one of the things we teach here at Digital DJ Tips, you see, we teach five methods of DJ, well, five, five steps of DJing. Gear, music, techniques, playing out and promoting yourself. Those five steps. You want to be a DJ, you've got to get them all right. This is about the playing out one. This is about step number four. And so what we teach in our book is that if you want to play out, you should start with the people you know. And so don't try and throw an event for people, you know, you want 500 people you've never met to turn up. Open your phone and look for the people on your phone who you might be able to twist their arm and get them to come out and bring a friend. Find 10 of those, you've got a crowd of 20. Bring your family and get your girlfriend or boyfriend to do the same. You've now got 40 or 50 people in the venue. It's called a party, right? So that's how we teach. And so this is the kind of thing that's gonna get those people to come out who would not normally come out. So number one in our ideas of ways to get gigs when all your local clubs have closed is to throw a tribute night, hire a venue for an evening, just use somewhere that doesn't normally have gigs. And that way you can, you can well, get a crowd and have a good time. Right, next one, and this happens a lot as we found out from talking to you in the week, play your local gym. It turns out that there's a lot of DJs in these days of people being a bit more careful, looking after themselves. A lot of DJs are playing in gyms, whether they're playing fitness classes or just playing in the gyms, you know, associated social events or whatever. Get involved with your gym and be the DJ. Music and fitness are definitely linked. And we're going to move on to that again for another one of our ideas in a little while. So if you play gyms, if you've got an in in this game, tell us about it and I'll share your thoughts afterwards when we go to listen to all your comments and read out a few of them. You know, I've got friends who compile mixtapes for gyms. That's another way to at least get your music out there. Uh, I've got friends who make money doing that. So look, gyms are a big business, especially the fitness classes where they need music, right? So try DJing your local gym. Uh, the next one then is, this is kind of like something that has taken off at various times over the last few years in the UK. I'm guessing it happens elsewhere as well. And it is illustrated by this picture here. Throw rave nights for families or throw nights weekdays that are, you know, maybe ending at 10 o'clock at night. Um, so not only is the time more amenable to families, but they're not taking up weekend times that might have other family activities. This is a way of getting people out who otherwise could just not get out because they can't find babysitters or they don't want to be out till four in the morning when the kids are going to wake up at seven. Having a place where, because kids love music, they'll jump around and dance to anything. So they don't care that they're going to a tribute night that their parents uh, will, be remember, will be remembering the past on. So you could combine our first idea with our third idea here. Early doors nights, weekday nights. In the place where I am from, Manchester, or in significantly um, the suburbs, because these tend to happen in the suburbs as well. Don't drag people into town. Just do it in the suburbs where they live. There's a night called The Bop in a place called Chalton. It might not be on anymore. This is a while ago, which was deliberately aimed at parents who uh, could either go. Um, I think that was one that you went without your kids, but family raves or, 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 or events where you can go with your kids. Great place to DJ, great way to attract people out when you want to play somewhere. So the next one is kind of related to the one that we looked at a second ago. Uh, and this picture is not what you're going to end up doing. I mean, if you do, well done. Uh, but this is just to illustrate it. It's playing sporting events. So a lot of sporting events have DJs, of course. And pretty much, I'd say, the majority of big venues will have a, a house DJ. But it's not just sporting events in big venues like this, which are going to be hard to get, of course. It's just as simple as 
getting involved with your local sports association that you might be involved with anyway, like for instance your running group, and then DJing at their events, at their finish and start line. There's always music at the start and finish line at marathons, I know, because I run them, as does my wife. So if I'm not running one, we're off supporting her to do one. And there's always DJs, and they're normally not very good. And the most clued up events will have music all the way around as well. So at the big, the big points all the way around, they'll have DJs. And I often, you know, if I'm running an event and I'm on mile 15 of 26 and I'm starting to tire, to hear a good DJ, I can hear them before I can see them. I get the goosebumps, I start feeling for them, always got a massive smile and a, and a good word for them. They, they love it. They love to know they're inspiring people. They can see they're helping you around as a runner. So be that DJ, get involved and get event DJing where there's sports going on. There's always a call for that kind of thing. So today we're talking about ways to get gigs away from the club and away from festivals. Festivals are hard to get gigs at, clubs are closing, so what are you to do? The next one is a very common one, of course, but a lot of you mentioned it. And this picture is actually from a, uh, a satirical website called Wonderground Music. And Wonderground Music published this picture with what is undeniably one of the downsides of a lot of DJing where you haven't got a wrapped dance floor all looking at you which is, I think their caption to this picture was, DJ playing in restaurant kids himself that people are listening. <laughs> so, a little bit harsh really. But look, DJing in restaurants, this comes back to where do you go out? Where do the people you know go out? What are the places that you socialise at? I'm gonna guess if you're not a 20 year old anymore, then it isn't going to be dark, sticky underground clubs. It's going to be places that are a little bit more high class, places where you can maybe eat, places that are at the very least multi, multi-function venues, right? So DJs in restaurants, certainly where we are down here on the kind of Europe's version of the Californian coast, uh, down here in the Mediterranean, there's, you know, every restaurant worth its salt has got a DJ booth set up, right? The DJ comes on a little bit later on, they might even have a small dance floor. Be that DJ, because the people you know are going out in these places, and this doesn't break our rule, which is play in the places where people you know go. So the seventh one, uh, the sixth one, sorry, that I've got for you here is quite a fun one. It's one that James Hype, our tutor, has done uh, before. And also Ben, our community manager, is extremely um, hot on the whole um, VW camper van scene, as are we actually, but Ben, I'd say, is even more into it. He's renovated his own camper van. He goes to all the shows. And this picture here illustrates it perfectly. Be a proper mobile DJ, and I'm not in any way getting at mobile DJs here, but you know, be a, a, a literal mobile DJ by converting some kind of vehicle, and James Hype did it with a, 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 an old burger van, an old burger trailer. Uh, this is clearly a Volkswagen camper van. Convert a vehicle into a DJ booth and turn up and just DJ in places and have a bit of a vibe going on where you're the DJ that people get used to seeing turning up at whatever it is, your local farming show, your local, your local wholesale market, your local uh, whatever. Um, whatever your scene is, turn up and DJ at it. You know, this is great fun. Certainly enjoyed a lot of these kind of gigs over the years myself, although I've never owned a setup like this. Wouldn't it be good to though? Look at that TV screen in the roof there. Fantastic. So this could be a great hobby, a great thing that you could be known for and you could do for many years, right? I'm sure you can imagine uh, the fun you could have if you could get around to converting a vehicle to do something like this. And then I guess on a similar vibe, the last one I've got for you, but I'm really, really, really looking forward to opening up and seeing what you're saying about this. Uh, it's always my favorite part of these live shows. But the last one I've got for you from our brainstorming here at Digital DJ Tips is a bit of a hippie one, but nothing wrong with that. Throw a rave in the woods, go dark. Just get out of there. Oh, we've, oh, we lost the picture. There we go, it's back again. We really did go dark there, didn't we? Throw a rave in the woods. Take your decks, take your, take, your, uh, take your supplies and head off to the woods with a few friends. Go somewhere where you're not gonna cause any harm. No one can even hear you. Get right off the beaten track and party the night away with a generator uh, and some like-minded souls. Uh, this can be really, really great fun. And I've had, I remember going to an eclipse party, uh, a solar eclipse party in Cornwall once uh, with some hippie friends of ours. We had a great time, although I'll be honest with you, the weather, there, were, there was no solar eclipse going on there. It was, uh, it was as if there was a solar eclipse going on all day, the weather was that bad. But anyway, good times. So look, throw your own party in the woods, why not? Um, 
But before we go over to talk to you guys and girls about this topic, and we've covered tribute nights, gyms, uh, doing early doors or weeknight raves that, that, that you can go to with the family. Don't even need to bring a babysitter. Don't even need to get a babysitter. You just take your kids with you. Uh, we've covered um, sports events, restaurants and cafes, uh, going properly mobile by kitting out some kind of mobile vehicle with your gear, and then going totally dark, having raves in forests. We've been talking about playing out, and again, in our book, in our five steps of DJing, which is so important, I think they're on page three of our book, here they are, our five steps of DJing. It's the way we teach DJing in, here at Digital DJ Tips, gear, music, techniques, playing out and promoting yourself, playing out, right? Number four, you don't actually have to play out because nowadays you can perform without leaving your house. By live streaming, a lot of people have told us in the week that they get really big audiences playing on Twitch, and they play what the hell they want. And I also want to say, for a lot of DJs, don't give a damn. Playing, performing for themselves at home, in their own bedrooms or in their own living rooms is enough. Don't think you have to play out. Playing out to me is, is such a great part of DJing, but it's not the reason a lot of people do it. So don't feel guilty if you're happy to DJ at home. You carry on DJing at home. Anyway, that's what I've got for you. It, this was the positive spin on last week's uh, What Killed Local Clubs. Uh, and uh, we did enjoy last week's, but we wanted to turn it around and, and give a positive spin so DJs that want to find gigs can find them. At least give some ideas about how to find gigs. Now uh, it's over to chat with you for the last few minutes of our live show today. By the way, uh, I'm going to spend a good 10 minutes with you here or 15 minutes with you here, but then I've got to go. We're in the middle of editing the final, final, final lessons of a course that we've spent many months making. So if you want to learn Learn how to DJ with acapellas, with stems, if you want to use real-time stems technology or use the amazing new software that lets you prepare acapellas ahead of time, uh, we've got a massive new course covering it all, covering everything you need to know, everything you need to do, doesn't matter what hardware you've got, what software you've got, we've got a solution for you and it's in our new course. So in order to find that course, head over to the Digital DJ Tips website uh, and in fact, uh, because this is only going to be for our members at first, when you get to the website, if you're not already a member, you need to click the big join button at the top. Put your email address in here and we will then let you know when this course goes live. I mean, we're literally a couple of weeks away from it, but it's only going to be to our members first. So if you're not a Digital DJ Tips member, you simply won't hear about it. And by the time it goes on sale to the public, it will cost you more money. So get it first and get it uh, never to be repeated because we, we never repeat the launch prices to our members ever uh, price by just going and signing up for Digital DJ Tips. Right, I'm sure you already are a member and you don't need to do that, in which case hang on and we'll let you know. Uh, let's have a chat then. Let's see what you are saying about places to play gigs. Uh, so hello to all our regulars. I won't call you all out this week because I want to get straight down to the uh, comments. So let's do that. Let's get straight down to the comments and I'm looking now for uh, people uh, apart from all the usual, he's dealing with it. And that's all about the technical difficulties at the beginning, right? Uh, but apart from all those, we're now going to get on to, uh, to, to the point where I'd got it together and the comments you'd be having since then. So DJ Stu C, first one. Stu says, um, so uh, a side hustle, DJing in small bars, playing the music I want to play without playing the music I don't and no microphones. Uh, so yeah, you know, this is the thing. So a lot of DJs, this is a good point actually that I want to cover. A lot of DJs, this is the tra trajectory of a lot of DJs. Start off DJing for your mates when you're 17. Have a bit of success, maybe spend your early 20s, mid 20s DJing. Realising you don't want to step up and become an international superstar DJ, you want to actually maybe settle down and get a job and do some of the other things that are not compatible with that lifestyle. Miss the DJing, set up a mobile DJ business. DJ parties, DJ weddings, etc. It's a great path, a lot of DJs take it, a lot of DJs will take a really nice part-time income from it, some will go full-time. However, if you're not going to become a mobile DJ, Mainly, the reason you don't want to do that is you don't want to play music that you don't feel passionately about. And that's fine. Not everyone is cut out to play pop music for a living. And that's what Stu is saying. Stu plays the music Stu wants to play and doesn't have to use a microphone. And the way he's done it is become, uh, by becoming a DJ in small bars. Uh, and that is a great way to go, go about it. So Stu, well done for make, making a success of it. And uh, thanks for sharing. DJ Zemi 
says, I got hired to a wedding DJ agency. See, this is the other side of the coin. Uh, in the spring, and I made over 10K Canadian dollars over summer DJing weddings, and it's only slowing down now in October, so well done. Um, going to parties and going to gigs and schmoozing is a great way to make contacts if you want to do this stuff. Thanks for that. You don't like my music. Um, so Jamie says on Facebook, hello, Jamie. Yeah, exactly what I was saying. Realistically, club DJs will move to mobile. It'll make even more it will make mobile even more cutthroat than it already is. Well, maybe, but I, we always say there's, there's room at the top for the best. Uh, talent agencies are the best way to get consistent gigs. Thanks for sharing that. DJ Baldwin, when I, where I live, the music is mainly country music. I'm the only DJ DJing techno, trance, house and minimal. I'm doing something new in my city. Brilliant. Uh, I used to be a bartender at an upscale gym and I filled the jukebox with my CD collection. I got a lot of comments on the great music. It says you don't like my music, so good stuff. Thanks for that. Uh, Mix Lexic says I've been the party DJ for lots of friends, doing school discos, weddings and birthday parties. When I started um, for a crate of beer and a fish supper uh, was uh, what I charged, but now I name my price. Keep grinding. Uh, so I'm glad about that. Glad that you've uh, managed to, to claw your way out of the will DJ for food and then you're now making good money at that as well. I used to DJ an ice rink, says DJ Long G. We were talking about sports events, weren't we? Back in the day, what a blast that was. Uh, so no complaints from me. I'm ready to DJ a big charity event this weekend. Charity events, there's another great one. Get involved with your local charity. Feel good about what you're doing. Do some good and get gigs as well. Uh, so most of the places I DJ, says DJ A.D. Foster, uh, are restaurants with a uh, good bar scene. It's very typical here in New York City. Uh, so Catherine Catsgrove Miller just says good morning. Well, good morning to you or good afternoon if you happen to be uh, listening to this in Europe. Uh, sorry I'm late, says physical for posterity. You can start the stream now from the top. Well, we did actually. We did have a false start this week, so you were very late. Good morning. I've always considered playing music in the park just for fun, but I'm afraid of people finding it annoying. Uh, it's a good point. Some people are cut out to just turn up and play music and some aren't. I, I know what you're saying there. We were, funnily enough, we were talking about introvert DJs and whether you can be an introvert and a DJ uh, on another live stream recently. And I guess the extrovert people are more likely to just do stuff like that. Um, but yeah, back in the day, says DJ Ginormous, a local corporation used to hire me as a DJ um, at their HQ for three hours for their employees as they ate lunch. I got paid great dollar and it was super fun. Corporate gigs. Chasing the corporate dollar is another good way of playing where maybe you don't want to play lowest common denominator. So this can be good if you're like, let's say you're really into um, jazz funk, right? You could be the very stylish jazz funk DJ with a look and the kit that's all kind of fitting the vibe and the clothing. This is who you are. And you're, you, that's all you get hired out to do. Well, look, people who book corporate events are always looking for something a bit different. They're looking for the, the magician who can do close-up magic at tables when people are eating. They're looking for the DJ that plays jazz funk and that brings a little vibe, maybe brings a saxophonist with them or whatever. So if you don't want to go down the path of playing pop music to a mixed crowd, maybe the corporate circuit is a way you can twist it to what you do. And then if you market yourself properly, make money at it. So thanks for that. Uh, this is from Lee who says, I see a few gyms now have DJs at busy times. Uh, gyms was our second uh, tip here. I DJ a specific class in a local gym. It's amazing the people you meet who also ask about private bookings. Yep, cross fertilization, right? Uh, it's almost like you're doing it as marketing for what you really want to do. Um, you left out DJing on your balcony in Gibraltar, says DJ Ginormous. So DJ Ginormous remembers the lockdown days when we used to go live from my balcony, which is very, very high up in our apartment block here in Gibraltar. And you can see Africa, you can see Spain, you can see the runway because we've got an airport here and you can see the hills in the distance. Um, we used to DJ at sunset with the everywhere going dark. It was lovely. Um, certainly lifted our hearts in the whole lockdown period. Yes, well, we did touch on live streams at the end, didn't we? So yeah, good times. Uh, but, uh, but then the world came back and we came back to work and it all ended. Anyway, Alan says, I love the idea of throwing a rave in the woods. I think the Newmark Mixstream Pro would be brilliant for this. You guys and girls always find a way to bring it back to DJ gear, don't you? Uh, but yes, the Newmark Mixstream Pro might well be. I'm trying to get it the right way up. Uh, a great thing. It's got a battery. It's got Wi-Fi. Not that there's much Wi-Fi in the woods. It's got speakers, so you don't need to bring monitor speakers yet. Could well be the perfect piece of kit for a rave in the woods. If you go down to the woods today, you better go with your Mixstream Pro Go. 
so this one is from uh, Mixlexic, who says, I also did a 90s hip hop night, which was good fun. And unfortunately, the vid got in the way and I haven't got back to it. The vid, COVID, the vid, I've never heard COVID shortened to the vid before, quite like that. Uh, so from what I see, says Mixmaster G, Halloween is the single biggest period for DJs. It's become bigger than New Year's Eve now. Possibly, yeah, never thought of that. So building up to it right now. Uh, Philip Tan says, Mu museums in my area do a lot of evening programming for grown-ups with drinks and catering. These are low stress DJ gigs. Museums, never thought about that one. See, that's what these streams are all about, sharing ideas uh, among ourselves. So what a small world we live in. I was born in Kenya and I remember going to some, some raves that someone called George was talking about, rhino charges. Uh, so that's, that's from Drove T. So George, Drove T remembers what you were talking about a bit earlier, so cool. Uh, right, so one or two more. This is from Paul. I turned down a 21st last weekend as I want, wanted to be sure what they wanted and I had little time to prepare. I regret that now. I wish I'd just risked it. I'm sure it would have worked out. Yeah, I say I say you should always jump at these gigs. They tend to turn out better than you think. Um, T Diamond says, I've had a couple of gigs between weddings and funerals and private parties. DJing funerals. This is something we've covered on the DJ on the site before. Uh, due to me gaining a following on social media, my social media total is about 7,000 followers, so record videos constantly. Record everything you do. Agreed. Record everything you do. Uh, I just finished a marathon of DJing and performing, and now I've got two offers to DJ at those venues, says Benny. That's great. Jimmy on Twitch, I'm just getting back to DJing. I used to DJ back in the late 90s. I ended up picking up a Denon DJ Prime 4 Plus on release date. I've been practicing for my friends and family in backyard parties. This has produced actual small gigs. So far, we have a couple of gigs a month for the next few months. Fantastic. Keep it DIY, promote yourselves uh, and video everything. That's the other thing we're adding uh, here. So um, this is from DJ Mao who says, uh, I've done uh, a lot of editing for reels on Instagram and TikTok. Uh, and it's definitely worth doing to promote yourselves. Uh, Mika says on Facebook, says I've got residences, at local wineries and art galleries. Art galleries have come up twice. They do not want to use streaming services for music. No, they want something a bit cooler. Uh, great. Uh, I've DJed spin classes, says Valhalla. So thank you for sharing that. It does seem to be one of the popular ones. And DJ uh, V. DJ VJ Nigel uh, says, I'm doing a baby shower this weekend. Uh, so, uh, and DJ Ginormous says, look out for Phil's upcoming book, DJing for Memorial Services, how to put the fun into funeral. <laughs> I love it. And on that, I think we're going to leave it today. We've been talking about places you can play beyond clubs and festivals today. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining in. As ever, you can watch the replay if you're on YouTube or Facebook, and you will also see an article supporting this over on, U on Digital DJ Tips. In fact, Digital DJ Tips has got an incredible new page, which I'm going to show you now just before we leave, a little PSA here. Uh, so if you head to the Digital DJ Tips website, at the top of the site, uh, we've got our DJ courses, of course, we've got our blog, but then we've got this new page called Videos. And here you will find, it's like the YouTube, or rather the Netflix of DJing. Uh, here you will find an ever scrolling selection of live shows, reviews, features from Digital DJ Tips. Whatever it is, I bet there's something here that's going to help you become a better DJ or a better DJ producer, which is what this is all about. Uh, and so go take a look at our new video section when you can. Meanwhile, for me, Phil, here in the studio, get good, get out there, play, play wherever you can when you do and make the moments. And I'll see you again very soon.